Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 14, titled Magical Thinking. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So last night's episode of Supergirl was definitely one of the strongest episodes of the season. I think that they are getting better and better since they started on this totem story. It's actually interesting and I think for the most part it's pretty damn good and I'll explain my thoughts throughout this video and I have quite a lot of notes that we need to dig into so stick around for the whole time. But before we get into the breakdown I just wanted to mention that we just added a new perk to our membership so if you want to become a member of the channel and support the channel now is the time to join because we are going to be doing monthly giveaways with Arrowverse DVDs and the winner will get to choose their season of their choice. This is going to be happening every month and every single member, no matter what tier you are, is going to be in the running for that giveaway every single month. It's going to be a Blu-ray or a DVD that is Arrowverse related. So please be sure to click the join button. You have to do it on the computer. It doesn't let you do it on the phone as of right now to join and become a member of the DC TV show. Also, we have our monthly member Zoom call which is happening this Friday, so now really is the time to get on board if you want to support the channel and get these cool perks as well. So let's go ahead and get into today's review. So the episode kicks off with Game Night. And now Game Night is something that obviously is a very big tradition in the Supergirl show with Team Supergirl and the Super Friends. So they normally do this, I forgot what specific day it is, but like once a week, and so game night is on with Lena, Alex, John, Kelly, Nia, and everyone. And then Kara shows up and she's surprised that everyone's there because she thought that they called off everything, like all their commitments due to Nixley still being out there and being a threat. But then they all clarify like that they think it's important that they need some rest and they need to have some fun. And this is what game night is for. It's to break from being Team Supergo and be the super friends, you know? And I think Kara was about to embrace it before she actually got interrupted, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, so let's move on, and this is all throughout the same scene. There's, like, quite a lot of stuff that happens right at the start of the episode. So Nia offers to help out Lena with her magic because she thinks it sounds somewhat similar to her dreaming abilities. However, later in the episode, this kind of backfires against Nia, helping Lena with her new powers. And this is because one of Lena's spells goes wrong, and it actually twists her brain around, and so she can't tell left from right. So it's a very funny scene, and it's a bit of like, oh, well, I guess you shouldn't trust someone who's just trying to get a hold of their powers. Okay, so in the scene, also Kelly says that she's not going to be in the tower tomorrow, which explains why she's not there while well, William is there, and that she's going to be with Esme, which sets up what happens at the end of the episode, which we'll get into later in the video. But at the same time, Kara reveals that William is going to be shadowing them, and he's going to be embedded at the tower, and this is obviously a huge thing. William knows Kara, Nia, Alex, but he doesn't know that Kara is Supergirl, he doesn't know that Nia is Dreamer, but obviously now he knows Alex is involved with them and that John, you know, Martian Manhunter is her friend and therefore Kara's friend. So he knows a little bit about that, but now he's getting more and more information. I feel like pretty soon he's going to get the reveal that Kara is Supergirl and that Nia is Dreamer as well before the end of the season. And so in regards to William, by the end of the episode, he breaks down in front of Andrea, telling her that if she wants his reporting, this very exclusive reporting actually, like who out of any reporter could get into the Super Friends headquarters and actually shadow them? I mean, it's very impressive when you look at it. And so if she wants to include his reporting in CatCo, he even brings up the idea of giving his journalism and the exclusive to the Daily Planet, which is definitely a burn. Andrea must not interfere and the reporting must be done his own way. And it's not just for clicks like the way that Andrea wants his reporting to be, as you can see at the end of the episode and you've seen over the last couple of episodes. I mean, pretty much Andrea has just been like this antagonistic force for William and everyone at CatCo because all she wants is clicks and she will do anything to get clicks and to get that reporting and she's been very forceful 
with William and with Kara and everyone else at Ketco to get those clicks. And so at this point during the game night, well, kind of as it's starting, Kara starts laughing uncontrollably. And at first it seems like she's normally laughing, but then it gets kind of crazier and crazier, and it turns out she's mimicking Nixley's feelings after locating the humanity totem. Now this is very interesting, and obviously Nixley is quite cunning, and she's your typical villain that likes to laugh at stuff, and that's why she's laughing in this case. And from this, Kara can tell she's onto something. And just a bit later in the episode, she gets the humanity totem by taking it from a group of fighters. And they don't really put up a fight, which is very ironic. And Nixie actually points this out because, you know, they're supposed to be the guys that can beat anyone up. But literally, they're like, yeah, sure, just take it. And then she uses it. She sucks humanity out of everyone, including these fighters, causing chaos throughout National City. But by accident, she absorbs all of their compassion, which they had inside of them, making her feel proper emotions, which stops her from completing her mission at one point in this episode. And at one point, she drops the totem, lets it go out of the sky, and Team Supergirl gets it. And she feels like she has to do this, otherwise she can't complete and get the rest of the other totems while she is so compassionate and she can't, you know, endanger any lives or kill anyone in this case this is what Mitch brings up why can't you kill the guard well she feels too much compassion about like what would happen the effect of losing someone to you know his family or something and that's obviously a very big point and this is something that we have to grapple with as an audience as well because every time she kills someone it's a big deal like imagine if it was in real life so I really like the way that they sort of explored her feeling compassion and not being able to get this totem and keep it successfully so she fails her mission and so Team Supergirl is able to contain it and so Kelly goes to visit Esme there is a lot of stuff with them this episode a bit more than I was expecting which is nice to see because I am enjoying the Kelly kind of Esme stuff that we've been getting this season along with the Joey storyline which are all pretty interlinked and something big happens in regards to Kelly and Esme at the end of the episode which we'll get to once we get to the end of my notes and so at this point William meets Mr. Manhunter as he refers to him which I thought was really funny or Jean and the rest of the team at the headquarters of the Super Friends that being the tower of course and so they set some ground rules keeping some things private like the location of the tower and the identities of the super friends they asked william to do this because they believe this is what is going to be best for their image and public interest and obviously this gets into a lot of points in regards to journalism and like what people say and what people hold back and by the end of the episode they agree that basically it's better if people know a bit more about this so it's more exposed and that people have some hope rather than feeling hopeless while chaos is just raining havoc over the city. Just after this point where William has had everything explained to him, they locate Naxxum's ship which arrives back over National City so they go after Nixley who grabs a hold of the totem before Supergirl can stop her and it's at this point that Supergirl leaves William and flies over to some part in National City to help Guardian and Sentinel as they try and contain the absolute chaos that is happening throughout the city's streets. And Kara doesn't feel Nixley's rage and she only feels her compassion. This is a scene that obviously gives them a clue about how they can maybe stop Nixley, so something is definitely off and Supergirl knows it. And after this, Nixley and Mitch figure out where the next totem is. It's at The Hague in Holland. They are gonna go after it, and this is teased at the end of the episode, so the next episode, episode 15 that is coming up, they're gonna be going to Holland at least for a bit just to get the totem, then they'll probably return to National City as Team Supergirl tries to take down Nixley once again it's going to be like this throughout like pretty much the rest of the season I believe where you're going to have Team Supergirl chasing after Nixley as Nixley goes after the totems and Team Supergirl are going to try to intercept. Okay so Esme is attacked and she uses her fire breath which was quite a shock. Obviously we knew she was an alien however we've never seen her properly use her powers and at this point her parents or her foster parents leave her stranded to protect them just because they saw that she had powers 
And this is terrible parenting, and this sets up the ending of the episode, which sees Alex and Kelly meeting Esme together for the first time, and it's heavily hinted that they are going to adopt Esme. It's incredibly obvious, and I am so excited for that. I really hope they go full on with this and actually do it, because I feel like it's going to be such a great thing for Alex and Kelly, and especially as we lead them, it will give them some sort of purpose that isn't just being a superhero. Obviously, they'll continue to be superheroes. I mean, Alex is returning for the Flash crossover, which will air post Supergirl's season finale. So obviously, they're going to continue with their superhero stuff, but they're also going to have some proper meaning in their personal lives, as they will have probably Esme to look after. So it's very, very sweet. Okay, so Supergirl figures out that the totem itself is the gauntlet in this case for the humanity totem, and she wants to use Lena's old magic spell that failed and backfired to flood Nixley's emotions. And this is obviously to draw her out so that they can get the totem and Nixley will be stopped at the same time. But it's extremely risky and Lena is very against this because it does endanger the people by enhancing their emotions and their anger and the fighting is going to get even worse if they do this and obviously Lena is very insecure about her new powers because she hasn't been able to control her magic. William actually gives some very good advice to her and he references like what happened when his dad died and how he was trying so hard to be meticulous and be exactly like his father in terms of his baking, but he realized that he needed to do it his own way and to interpret it differently rather than being so exact, and this is something that Lena takes on and she's going to be using as proper advice to properly harness her powers, which is very exciting. And so Supergirl agrees after this for William to write an in-depth report on Nixley's threat as the imp going around and the magical user who is causing chaos throughout National City, and also that one of the team members now has the access to use magic, but he doesn't actually expose who the magic user is in the article, and so this is a huge exclusive for Catco. This is at the point, like I said earlier, where Andrea kind of freaks out, she's very happy, like lots of people are going to read it, and it's a great story, it's a great exclusive. But William at this point, like I said earlier, puts his foot down and is like, nope, I'm not going to listen to how you want me to report this as a clickbait kind of exclusive, but I'm going to do it how I want to, and I'm not going to expose my sources, I'm going to lay in with Team Supergirl, and I'm going to get to know them better, and I'm going to get a good report out of it for you, but I'm going to do it my own way, and I love that he did that. It's very great to see him actually standing up against someone who's being extremely antagonistic against him, or has been throughout these last episodes. And so Supergirl has a great scene where a perp actually shoots at her. So he has a gun, he's rapid firing like all of his bullets, and she's barely phased, like she's matrixing it up, just staring at the bullet, looking around, and she literally flicks the bullet at his head, knocking him out. What a great scene, I love that. I'm sure a lot of you guys really love that too. Okay, so, Team Supergirl, they're able to capture the humanity totem, and they know that Nixie's going to be angrier than ever, and Nixie at this point sets out for her new mission. Obviously, she's a bit angry at Mitch for letting her let loose of the totem. However, it seems very important that she did that. Obviously, she can come back in the future and steal it from Team Supergirl, so I don't think it's like the biggest deal in the world. However, Nixie is going after the next totem in Holland at The Hague. That's going to be next episode. And so, in regards to Lena, she thinks she's back on track with the next totems, and she can maybe use her powers, and Nia wants to go after the Dream Totem, obviously, because she thinks she can help, because it's definitely in her field of expertise. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I enjoyed the episode. I thought it was a very good episode. Very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing the next episode after this and how the story is going to continue as we head towards the season's end and the series end as a whole with episode 20 coming in November. But for now, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. Also remember to become a member if you want to be included in the monthly member Zoom call and also the new perk of 
the monthly members giveaway, which will see one person winning an Arrowverse related DVD or Blu-ray. You can join by clicking the join button on your PC or Mac. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, click on the top right corner to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.